today we will be covering lesson name a case of suspicion in your syllabus so learners let's begin with the chapter let's go through the background of the author so this is edgar wallace edgar wallace was born on april 1st 1875 in greenwich london england he died on february 10th 1932 in hollywood california us he was a british novelist playwright and journalist who was an enormously popular writer of detective and suspense stories born into poverty he was an illegitimate london child wallace left school at the age of 12 and held a variety of old or jobs until he joined the army at 18 He served in the South African War until 1899 when he became a reporter. Wallace practically invented the modern thriller. His works in his genre have co are complex but are clearly developed plots and are known for their exciting climaxes. Wallace wrote around 175 books. 15 plays and countless articles his literary reputation has suffered since his death his works include sanders of the river the crimson circle the flying scot and the terror so these are some important works of edgar wallace edgar wallace was known for writing detective novels now learners before beginning with the chapter let's go through some learning objectives so after completing the lesson successfully you will be able to read and understand a suspense story in english learners you will be able to use phrasal verbs you will also be able to change direct speech into indirect speech give and understand direction in speech plus you will be able to write your own experiences now let's begin with the lesson a country doctor sets out to help a patient in the middle of a windy night whom does he meet on the way and what does he learn Let's begin with the lesson learners. He threw back the covers and sat up on his bed. His feet feeling along the cold floor for his house. Slippers, the telephone ringing incessantly a little distance away. He turned on the light and walked to the phone and took down the receiver. This is Dr. Benson, he said. The November wind was bringing sounds of winter as it blew around the little white house. The doctor got into his clothes. He went to the table and stared for a moment at his watch, his spirit complaining at the job ahead of him. 2 o'clock, his mind also complained at the horrible hour and he wondered why children had to be born at such improper times. he took up to two small handbags the short pill bag as the people of the town knew it and the long obstacle case the baby bag they called it dr benson stopped a moment to light and then put back the pack of cigarettes in his overcoat pocket the wind felt like a surgeon's knife at his face as he opened the door and ran bending low around the driveway to the garage his car started with difficulty coughed half a dozen times as he drove down the driveway but then began to run more smoothly as he turned down grass street and on to the deserted highway 
Mrs. Ott Sorle, who Dr. Benson was on his way to visit, had already had a dozen of children. But it seemed to the doctor that never once had she had a baby in good weather, nor in daylight. And while Dr. Benson was a country doctor, he was still a young man and couldn't find the pleasure that his father, the old Doc Benson, had found in seeing Ott, the father, always two or three babies behind in payment for his baby bills. It was a long ride to Sorley Farm and the sight of a man walking alone along the country road as seen just ahead by the lights of the car was a welcome relief to the doctor. He slowed down and looked at the man walking along with difficulty against the wind. A little package under his arm. Coming alongside, Dr. Benson stopped and invited the man to ride. The man got him. Are you going far? asked the doctor. I'm going all the way to Detroit, and the, said the man. A rather thin man with small black eyes, filled with tears from the wind. Could you give me a cigarette? Dr. Benson unbuttoned his coat, then remembered the cigarettes in the outer pocket of his overcoat. He took out the packet and gave it to the writer, who then looked in his own pockets for a match. When the cigarette was lighted, the man held the packet for a moment, then asked, Do you mind, mister, if I take another cigarette for later? The rider shook the packet to remove another cigarette without waiting for the doctor to answer. Dr. Benson felt a hand touch in his pocket. I'll put them back in your pocket, the little fellow said. Dr. Benson put his hand down quickly to receive the cigarettes and was a little irritated to find them already in his pocket. A few minutes later, Dr. Benson said, So, you're going to Detroit. I'm going out to look for work in one of the automobile plants. Are you a mechanic? said the doctor. More or less, I have been driving a truck since the war ended, but I lost my job about a month ago. Where were you in the army during the war? Yeah, I was in the ambulance section, right up at the front. Drove an ambulance for four years. Is that so? said Dr. Benson. I'm a doctor myself. Dr. Benson is my name. I thought this car smelled like pills. The man laughed. Then he added, more seriously, my name is Evans. They rode along silently for few minutes and the rider moved himself in his seat and placed his package on the floor. As the man leaned over, Dr. Benson caught his first good look at the small cat-like face. The doctor also noticed the long, deep scar on the man's cheek bright and red-looking, as though it were of recent origin. He thought of Mrs. Ott sorely and reached for his watch. His fingers went deep into his pocket before he realized that his watch was not there. Dr. Benson moved his hand very slowly and very carefully below the seat until he felt the leather holster in which he always carried with him his automatic pistol. He drew out the pistol slowly and held it in the darkness at his side. Dr. Benson stopped the car quickly and pushed the nose of his gun into Ivan's side. The rider jumped with fear and put up his hands quickly. My God, mister, 
he whispered. I thought you. Dr. Benson pushed the pistol still deeper into the man's side and repeated coldly. Put that watch in my pocket before I let this gun go off. Evans put his hand in his own vest pocket and later with trembling hands tried to put the watch into the doctor's pocket. With his free hand, Dr. Benson pushed the watch down into his pocket. He opened the door and forced the man out of the car. I'm out of here tonight, probably to save a woman's life. But I look but I took time trying to help you. Learners, Dr. Benson, he tried to tell Evans that I'm out here tonight, probably to save a woman's life. But I took out time to help you. He tried to tell the man. He tried to console him. He said that. After that, it was all over. However, Dr. Benson took a cigarette and sat down to smoke. A fellow I picked up in my car on my way up here tonight tried to rob me, he said to Ott, feeling a little proud. He took out my watch, but when I pushed my 0.45 pistol into his side, he decided to give it back to me. Ott smiled white at such an exciting story coming from young Dr. Benson. Well, I'm glad he gave it back to you, Ott said, because if he hadn't, he wouldn't have any idea what time the child was born. What time would you say it happened, doctor? Dr. Benson took the watch from his pocket. The baby was delivered about 30 minutes ago and right now it's... He walked over to the lamp on the table. He stared strangely at the watch in his hands. The crystal was cracked. The top was broken. He turned the watch over and held it closer to the lamp. He studied the worn inscription there. To Private T. Evans, ambulance section, whose personal bravery reser preserved our lives the night of November 3rd, 1943, near the Italian front. So the watch, it held Evans' name and his inscription. Now, learners, let's go through the analysis. Well, uh, Dr. Benson, he was a young doctor. He received a call at 2 a.m. in the morning to deliver a baby. He grumbled, you know, he got irritated at the horrible hour and he wondered why babies had to be born at such inappropriate times. He took uh, like I had mentioned before, that he took small handbags, okay, two small handbags. Um, the short pill bag, as the people of town knew it, and the long obstacle case, the baby bag that they called it. Mrs. Ott Surley, who the doctor was visiting, already had a dozen children. He thought that you know that she never delivered a child in a good weather or in daylight. So Dr. Benson was irritated. Why? Why children have to be born at such improper times? It was a very long trip to the Sorle farm. As he drove, he came across a thin man with small black eyes filled with tears from the wind. Since Benson, he was traveling alone and he was bored, he saw the man and he was relieved. He thought of giving him a ride. The man was going all the way to Detroit. Both of them, both Evans and Dr. Benson, they both chatted and from their conversation, we got to know that uh, Evans, uh, he was a mechanic and that he drove an ambulance, uh, in, like, he drove an ambulance for four years and he was involved in the army and he fought in the war. After the war was over, uh, 
He had been driving a truck, but recently Evans had lost a job. And uh, after the chat, we got to know that Benson, he was constantly observing Evans. Okay, so Evans was constantly under scrutiny. As they drove along silently and as the writer placed his package down on the floor, the man leaned over and Dr. Benson looked at his face. And what did he saw, learners? He saw a bright and red scar on his cheek. Okay. Then Benson suddenly realized that something is missing and that something is missing from his pocket. So when he realized that he's not wearing his watch, he, he took out his gun from his leather holster and he uh, you know, he threatened the man to give his watch back. He got angry. He realized, like when he leaned over, Dr. Benson realized that his watch is missing. So, from below the seat, he took out his gun and he threatened the man to give his watch back. Evans, okay, gave him a watch and Benson actually made the man get down. It was only after delivering, like learners, like I have, uh, you know, I have told the story and you must have observed that it was only after delivering Mrs. Sorley's baby that when he was announcing the birth time that he realized that, his, that the watch which he was wearing was not his. The inscription on the watch carried Ivan's name and actually, Ivan was being honest. Okay. So, this was after giving birth, after he had gone to uh, Ot Sorley's house to deliver the baby. And he was about, when, when he was about to announce the birth time of the baby, he then realized that the watch was not his. So, learners, what do you understand? What is the moral of the story? Many people judge a book by its cover without opening it up, but they might like what they find inside. We must give others an opportunity to show who they really are and then we should make our decision. Dr. Benson judges Evans to be a bad person from his behavior and appearance, especially the scar. But at the end, he discovers that Evans is an agreeable, good, brave and innocent person. Now learners, let's discuss some themes in the text. The first theme is that war is never over. Wars affected people negatively, on one hand by losing parts of their bodies or only having scars, just like what happened to Evans, like he also has a scar on his cheek from the war. And uh, seeing that scar, Benson has realized that, uh, you know, that he can't be trusted. So because of the scar, Benson has He's, he's, you know, making an, uh, he's thinking about events in a very negative way, okay, just by the scar. And scars and people's behavior, you can't judge that, okay. And uh, even after the war got over, uh, Evan's scar and his behavior, it affected his impression on Dr. Benson. Thank you so much. Thank you.